good recreation.
Amen. We could preach about it, sing about it, talk about it, on and on and on, because we have surely been blessed. Amen. If you don't know it, it's just because you don't know it. I promise you, you've been blessed. We've got another special song tonight. Amen. And they get ready to sing. Amen. Let's get our minds on the Lord. We, we, we came out on a Sunday night. Amen. Some churches don't even have Sunday night services anymore. Amen. But we still do. And you made the effort to come. Amen. Let's worship him. He's good to us. And we have been blessed. What you going to sing, Jay Bird? Oh, uh, oh, I had one here. I was looking for it. Can't find the word. I hadn't had the word. Uh, um, Need the word. Amen. Had an F chord here. What do? Old time preacher. Say again. Old time preacher. All right. I got you. You want an F or what? Yeah, go ahead. Turn your F chord. Turn it. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna play this new Taylor guitar. Praise the Lord. I, I like musical instruments. Just uh, right up here. In this world I've tried most everything And I'm happy now to say There's nothing like religion In a good old-fashioned way I'm walking in the grand old highway And I want the world to know That I'd rather be an old-time Christian Lord Than anything I know I'd rather be an old-time Christian Lord Than anything I know There's nothing like an old-time Christian With a Christian love to show I'm walking in the grand old highway And I'm telling everywhere I go I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord Than anything I know That's in the book If you want to sing it with me There are many things I'd like to be As my journey I pursue I've longed to be a leader Like a mortal man would do I'd like to be a millionaire With a million to be stole But I'd rather be an old-time Christian Lord Than anything I know I'd rather be an old-time Christian Lord Than anything I know There's nothing like an old-time Christian With a Christian love to show I'm walking in the grand old highway And I'm telling everywhere I go I'd rather be an old-time Christian Lord Than anything I know all the world is bright since I got right now Singing, praying, shout All my burdens have been lifted Since the Savior brought me out I'll tell the world both far and near As I travel here below That I'd rather be an old-time Christian Lord Than anything I know I'd rather be an old-time Christian Lord Than anything I know There's nothing like an old-time Christian With a Christian love to show I'm walking in the grand old highway And I'm telling everywhere I go I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord Than anything I know I'd rather be an old time Christian Lord Than anything I know Amen, John chapter 8 tonight John chapter 8 I don't, um, I don't have an issue with change. I don't want to get so stuck in a rut that I, I'm not, I'm against change. But there's some old-fashioned things we could keep and be just all right. Amen. And I know I'm getting a little older, so some of the younger crowd looks at me and they may say that uh, he's just one of them old timers. And uh, but I'm gonna tell you, there's some old-fashioned ways that we ought to bring back. And there's some old things. Uh, hey, it doesn't even have to be necessarily biblical. They was just good ways. Amen. And uh, uh, the Bible tells us, search out the old paths. A lot of things she did have right, and we can always remember that. We can take some of the new and some of the old, and uh, 
and, and make it work. But if you get all new, sometimes you forget the old. And I tell you, the devil can use that and lead you astray if you're not careful. I always remember that. John 8 and uh, verse number 1. I want to read this account one more time to us. And, and I know we all know it. And uh, like Brother Wayne says, there's just so much in there in these 11 verses. But I think God can show us something tonight that maybe we hadn't ever thought of in this way. I know there's nothing new under the sun now, uh, but maybe a fresh new look at it tonight. John chapter 8, beginning in verse number 1. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master. Notice that, what they said unto him. Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. And Moses and the law commanded us uh, that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? And they said, tempting him... Uh, this they said, tempting him, uh, that they might have uh, might, might accuse him. But Jesus uh, stooped down and with his finger wrote in the ground as though he had heard them not. So when they had continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said, He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground, and they which heard it, uh, being convicted in their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest until the last. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. And when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. May God add his blessing. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. We ask you, Lord, now and let, make it come alive, God, and speak to us and help us and strengthen us as your people tonight. And we'll thank you for all that you do. And all of God's people said, amen. <clears throat> amen. Um, of course, we know this account here, and uh, uh, we, we're familiar with it, but I want us to think about it maybe in another way tonight. Um, I, I want us to know that this religious crowd, when Brother J uh, uh, Jay Burr was singing about old time uh, religion, uh, he, he wasn't meaning uh, religion like this, amen? Not a Pharisee cult religion, not a, a self-righteous religion, uh, but an old time religion, something that the old people would do, and that is not to be like the world is what he meant when he said that. And, and, but I want us to look at this and I want us to know here that uh, 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 in context of this scripture, uh, Jesus is talking about these religious leaders were being used by the devil. That if you'll read on down the whole chapter, he was saying the religious crowd was being used by the devil. I want to remind us tonight, don't let the devil use you now, amen. Hey, don't let the devil, you can be saved and you can be uh, in church and you can be doing everything you're supposed to do. And if you ain't careful, the devil will use you uh, uh, to deter people, to uh, uh, be a hindrance, amen, or, or to be whatever he wants to do. He wants to use you. He wants to trick you. Don't forget about the devil, Amen. He is uh, not our friend tonight, and he is after us. He is Satan in the Bible. He's the evil one in the Bible. He's the father of lies in this chapter. Uh, he's the prince and the power of the air. He's Lucifer. He's the tempter. He's the accuser. He's that dragon. He's the serpent. He's Beelzebub. He's Belial, whatever you want to call him. He's against you. There's an enemy after us, and his name is the devil. Amen. The devil, and if you'll read on down in a chapter, Jesus would talk all about the devil. Let me remind us that the devil is against us. <clears throat> and what we just read in the Bible, God showed me this. It was all a setup. That's what I want to, that's my title tonight. It's all a setup. 
This whole thing, these 11 verses we read, was a setup, and the devil is the one behind it all. He has set the whole thing up. But I want to show us now, in this thing, it was all a setup. You ever thought about that, Brother Wayne? I, I know you taught this every way you probably could teach it. Have you ever thought about this thing was a setup? Eh? It was a setup. Look at 3 through 6 again with me now in the Bible. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, it was all a setup. Hey, look, look. They said unto him, Master, this woman was taken with adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that we should stone him. What sayest thou? Verse 6. And they said this, tempting him. It was all a setup. Y'all getting it already? It was all a setup. It was all a setup. And they were setting Jesus Christ up for failure. They were setting him up for, the law says this now, you say you come from God, the law, the book of the law, God's law says this, what sayest thou? It was a setup. It was a setup. They tried to set him up for failure. Amen. But Satan was behind it. Hey, religion was behind it. And they, they were all, and they were all hypocrites, by the way, too. Every one of these that come to him, the most religious people of the day were all just hypocrites. I'll show you where it's hypocrites. That's why I read it like I read it. Verse number four, look what it says. But they said unto him, Master. Brother Jay taught, he taught us this morning. Master means teacher, rabbi. It's all the same. Master, they, they were calling him master. They come to him and said, hey, called him a good teacher. But you know what? If you'll flip back in the, in the chapter right before in verse number 7, and you can look in verse 47 and you can see, and the Pharisees answered, are you the see? They called him a deceiver. They was just calling him a deceiver, but now they're going to come to his face and call him a, 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 a master. That's the hypocritical part, amen? Hey, you ought to tell people like it is when you get to them. I don't say be mean and be nasty and be hateful to people, but you ought to tell everybody the same thing, amen? The same thing he said. Uh, they called him master, but uh, before they were calling him a deceiver. They said this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. And I want to remind us tonight, adultery is still sin. They weren't wrong on what they said. Adultery is a sin, and in the Old Testament, it was punishable by stoning. Amen. Hey, because it was a sin, God said it was a sin, and God still says it's sin. It ain't, it, 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 you, you're not, hey, look, here's what it says. If you're in the sin, you ain't going in. You ain't going in the kingdom of heaven if you're in the sin and the act of adultery. Amen. You're living in adultery. You're not going to heaven. I know what the newfang, uh, newfangled church says. It's okay to live like that. We're hyper grace. We're in the grace of God. Hey, we can sin and we still have grace. But don't forget what 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 9 and 10 says. The adulterer will not go to heaven. Well, I'm saved. You're an adulterer. You might not be saved is what I'm saying. Backslid or ain't never been saved. All that, all that is, is regardless. Hey, I, I'm, I'm tired of all. I told y'all before, I'm tired of discussing that. I don't want to discuss your salvation. If you're living in sin, you ain't going in. I know all of us has made sins. If all of us, none of us is perfect. I know that I'm going to get to that in just a minute. But I wanted to know the Bible still stands firm on adultery. And they were setting up Jesus to see how he would do it. But how did they catch her? My title tonight is, it was all a setup. But Tony, how did they catch her? They had to be there. And they had to be watching. Pornography is a sin, was a sin, still a sin. You say, with the word in the Bible, yes, it is. <laughs> Ain't it, Brother Jay? Hey, and guess what? It's in the same chapter. It's in the same verse of the same book that says adulterer ain't going to heaven and people that's in pornography, watches pornography, is not going to heaven. Well, you know, I'm a Christian, but I tr struggle in that area. You better get out of that area. You better get out. You better be led by the Holy Spirit and I promise you it won't lead you to a screen that's... Oh, 
I didn't say you couldn't slip up and you mess up. And I understand. But if, you, if you're steady in it, 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 you're steady clicking the button, steady clicking the button, steady scrolling the screen. Steady, hey, you're anyway, hey, and your wife's in the next room, your children's in the next room, and you're still doing it, man or woman. Hey, if you're locked in and you're in it, hey, pornea is in the Bible. Hey, it's in the Bible. And it says if you're in that, in, in, in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, you are not going to heaven. That's all I'm preaching. That's all I'm preaching. It was a setup. They said, trying to set Jesus up. And I believe after studying the day that they set her up. They knew who she was. So to use her weakness to set her up. And they would have stoned her and killed her. They set her up for failure. Still on point number one. The devil will set you up for failure. Yeah, y'all know I don't talk about what I used to be. But I know there's three things in my life that the devil is not going to come at me with because I know I'm not going to do it. I'm not being boastful. I'm not being proud. Never say never. I realize that. But I'm telling you, I'm, it's been 25 years since I've been saved, and I ain't never one time struggled with them. And Brother Dowley was my things. And I'm not going to name them because we don't, don't want to talk about all that kind of stuff. I'm just saying, I'm just saying this, that I don't think he's going to come at me like that. But don't think he won't come at me. I don't, I'm not so foolish to think he won't come at me. Huh? And he's going to tempt me with this, and he's going to tempt me with that. He's going to set me up for failure. I know that. He's going to use exactly where you're weakest at. And he's going to set you up for failure. He's going to set you up for failure. Point number two. Y'all see that in the scripture? Point number two. I didn't know I had this so quick. They set her up for failure. So they could set Jesus up for failure. The devil was behind it all. I, I, I'll say this and I'll move on. I wouldn't go to say there's somebody in here tonight. I love you enough to tell you that the devil right now is trying to set you up for failure. Somebody in the prayer room said, pray for uh, me and my family. The devil's fighting. He's trying to set you up for failure. Amen. And they come and they dragged her out. I know we've done it. They used to play Brother Thomas. And we was Pharisees. And we've, it was all a setup. They set her up for failure. But Jesus stooped down and set her up for freedom. It's in this chapter too. <laughs> you, you, you may be having thoughts of adultery. If you're in adultery tonight, you need to come on right now. I'm not going to play with you. I'm not going to sugarcoat with you. You need to come on to the altar. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about nobody. Come on right now because I'm worried about your soul. But if you've been contemplating something, if you've been, if the devil's been trying to set you up for this fair thing, I'm telling you, Jesus is right there in your setup, and he's setting you up to get free from it. Uh, there has no temptation that is common to man. Hey, that he has not made a way of escape for us. He's setting us up for freedom. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've battled with stuff since I I've been saved, and I'm going to tell you what, I had to give it to God, and he gave me freedom. Amen. Later on in the chapter, he says, and the truth will make you free. It'll make you free indeed. Indeed. And what you're doing, your deeds that you do, it will set you up. You're free. Free. You know, we all got things that he said that where he wrote on the ground. I, I say he said it because 
The Bible says that they heard it when he wrote it. <laughs> and we said, you know, he wrote, well, to the oldest one, you were with him last night. That's what the oldest one seen. You, and the next one, you was with her Tuesday night. We've heard that before, right? What, what else? Y'all help me out. Y'all help me preach this. What else did they say he wrote? Brother Jay, throw one out there. This just, yeah. For the sake of the sermon tonight, I think when he looked, when, when they looked down, they all seen their sin. You know how you can... They were speaking in tongues in the, when the new church began and everybody heard it in their own language. I believe when he wrote it, see, he, when God wrote three times in the Bible, y'all know that, the first time he wrote the law, amen, with his finger. The second time he wrote judgment because of the law. And, and then, then the second time he writes freedom. Tonight, I just want to think of it this way. When she looked down, all she seen was freedom wrote down there amen i'm gonna tell you when you look down when jesus sets you up hey it's freedom it's free where's thine accusers amen lord i have none he said well neither do i condemn thee i'm setting you free tonight amen i'm setting you free you can set free you can you can be set free tonight i think she saw the word freedom i can say that huh that that'll be biblically preachable because she got set free. And it's in context with this chapter. And lastly tonight. It was all a set up. They, they were setting them up for failure. Jesus set her up for freedom. And he set up her future. That's what the last verse told us. Yeah. Give me the last verse, 11. And he said unto him, No man, Lord, and Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Your future starts now. Go. See, that's, that, that's the part about living in Christ. I know we all sin. I, I know that. I know that. But how come that's all we talk about? How come the, the churches, that's what they get preached to? Well, ain't none of us perfect. Ain't, I know that. I, we ain't perfect. Brother Darrell, if, if they started a perfect line, we'd have to sit down and wait, wouldn't we, brother? I couldn't get in it. I'd have to, if I got in it, I'd have to get behind Jesus. And I'd have to stand close behind him. He set up her future. He says, now you can go and sin no more. Ain't that what the church is all about? It's about people that were sinners that's been set free and set up for life that we don't have. Hey, you, freedom is not being under control of sin. Hey, I know we got sin comes in our life, but we don't have to be under control of it. Well, that computer is my device. Well, that woman kept looking at me. Well, this is happening and that. Hey, hey, no, we don't have to. You don't have to sin is what I'm trying to say. I know the Bible says that if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the man Christ Jesus. Amen. And we are going to need it. We need grace. And we, I want to take it all. And, and I want every bit he's got coming my way plus some. But I'm telling you, we don't have to live in sin. And we don't have to live under the bondage of it we can celebrate freedom our future has been set Amen. the whole New Testament is teaching us that we can live above it that's what we ought to teach we ought to teach don't let it have dominion over you Satan wants to set you up for failure but Jesus will set you up for freedom, and he'll set you up for your future. I heard a preacher preaching, and I don't know why I'm saying this, but I heard a preacher preaching about that people keep going, well, the thief on the cross, the dying thief on the cross, well, the dying thief on the cross, well, the dying thief on the cross, he looks at one of them and says, I said, yeah, but you're a living thief. Huh? 
Brother Anthony, if you was on the cross and you was going to die and you asked God to forgive you, I'd say he forgave Brother Anthony and he was dying on the cross. I would never preach nothing about sanctification to you. I would never preach about you can live above sin. I, I, I would never preach have faith, brother. Hey, I would never preach that to you. I'd say go on to paradise. But the New Testament's there for us, church, to know and we don't have to. And if we do, hey, look, hey, hey. Where sin abounded, Romans 6, where sin abounded, grace much more did abound. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. But if we do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the man, Christ Jesus. Well, we can live above sin. Why? Because the devil set us up for failure. But Jesus set us up for freedom and he set up our future. Remember, Jesus is... The, the Satan might have been all them things I told you at the beginning. But Jesus is our Redeemer. Huh? Hey, Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Lamb of God. He's Emmanuel. He's our Good Shepherd. He's the Son of Man and the Son of God. He's the Light of the World. He's the Messiah. He's the Savior of the World. He's our Advocate. He's the Word. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Israel. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the Prince of Peace. He is God. He set up our future that we can live for him and be his example. And people see Christ in us. Amen. It's all a setup. And he has set us up for this. Brother Michael, y'all come get us a song or a verse or something tonight. It's a setup. The devil's trying to set us up to fail. But God set us up for freedom. And our future could be bright. I thank God for that. Huh? I don't stand before you and say, since I've been saved, I ain't never sinned. I, who, would, who would say? I'd run from a guy that said that. I mean, I'm serious. I, would, I wouldn't even look at him and tell him he was crazy. I'd run from him. He's done lost his mind. But sin don't have to reign in our mortal bodies. Huh? If we do uh, 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 mortify this flesh... And the deeds of this body, we shall live, is what the Bible says. We shall live. He set us up, church, for freedom and for a future freedom in Christ. Amen. Aren't you glad tonight as we all stand all over the house of God? Aren't you glad that he set us up? He set us all up for freedom and our future without sin as much as possible could we with ink the ocean feel and were the skies a parchment made think about this were every stall on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry nor could the scroll contain the whole though stretched from sky sing that amen that's one of my old favorites amen praise the lord thank god for his love towards us amen he set us up for freedom and to have a good future amen we love you tonight let's remember all these things coming up um, 
blood drive tomorrow from 4 to 6 30 is that right and um, come on out you can scan and get signed up so you can walk in and out real easy remember this if you're able to do this vacation bible school is coming up you got all the volunteers yet okay amen if you hadn't signed up yet sign up you'll be blessed that you did all right, any other announcements tonight? Amen. No other announcements tonight. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Thank you for coming out. Remember, you've been set up for a great life in Christ. Amen. Amen. We love you. Good to see each one tonight. I'm still counting my blessings up here. If y'all wonder what I'm doing, I'm still counting them. Amen. Brother Wayne, you, you, you led us in the prayer room. You led us here on the altar. How about dismissals, Brother Wayne?